Antarctica, a stunning and remote continent, is home to a variety of unique animals and natural wonders. Approximately 90% of all the ice on our planet is stored here. For a long time, people believed that these unique icy landscapes would remain unchanged. However, recent research suggests otherwise. Now, parts of West Antarctica are losing ice at an increasingly rapid rate. Researchers in the North-led EU project TIPAX show that a tipping point is very likely to be crossed in the future, resulting in irreversible melting of the ice sheet in some regions. Increased ice melt from Antarctica is a big concern for Europe. When we lose ice from Antarctica, it means that the global sea level will rise. I find myself here in Brussels, and to the north lies my home country, the Netherlands. If a sea level will rise there, it has very dire consequences. Back in 1953, the Netherlands experienced a huge flood driven by high sea levels. The North Sea flood was not caused by climate change, but even so it struck very hard and water levels rose, quickly overtopping the dikes. Streets became rivers and once quiet villages were transformed into watery nightmares. When you factor in extreme events like storm surges, together with future predictions for sea level rise caused by climate change, the scenarios become even more concerning. In future, the ice in Antarctica will not melt faster because of increases in air temperature there, but because of changes in the ocean. So most of the ice uh, from Antarctica flows into the ocean, where it forms ice shelves, which is floating platforms of ice, and they are melted from below from the heat in the ocean. Presently, Antarctica is uh, surrounded by cold water, but around this we have warmer water. And this cold water close to the Antarctic continent protects the ice shelves from being melted too rapidly. But in some places, like for example the Amundsen Sea, we uh, already have the situation that the warm water reaches the ice shelves and we have very high melt rates. And we see that drastic change is possible within a few decades and that warm water inflow can affect even the large ice shelves. So in consequence, the melt rates are increasing manifold and uh, a strong reaction of the Antarctic ice sheet is very likely. Um, with the CO2 rates continuing to rise as they are, um, this is more of a question when than if. So we now know well that the Antarctic ice sheet is impacted by the surrounding ocean and that's mainly because of the melting that happens beneath the ice shelves. But what we don't really know is how much the ice sheet will be impacted by changes going on in the ocean. Um, and that's one of the things that we're looking at uh, in the TIPEX project. So if these ice shelves around Antarctica were to be lost in the future, they would reduce what's called the back stress that's acting on ice that's further inland. Uh, and that allows it to flow faster, uh, discharges more ice into the ocean uh, and ultimately contributes more to global sea level rise. Importantly, these changes could set off um, a positive feedback mechanism whereby the ice sheet continues to lose mass with no further changes either in the atmosphere or the ocean. Uh, and this process is quite well known within the community and it's called uh, the marine ice sheet instability. And if this process were to be set off, we could see much, much larger contributions to global sea level rise from Antarctica than are currently predicted uh, in the IPCC reports. Um, this was a uh, first motivation for us to develop uh, coupled ocean ice sheet models. And it is quite challenging because in these coupled simulations, the shape of the ice sheet will evolve and therefore the ocean has to cope with an evolving thickness of the water column and an evolving extent of the ocean. It's a bit as if we were trying to simulate the circulation in the North Sea with having the Denmark that is constantly sinking and re-emerging in, uh, in the simulations. When you start to couple these models, you have other feedback also that appear in the system. For example, if an ice sheet is thinning, the ice will end up in the cold surface layer of the ocean and therefore this will stop uh, ice shelf melting. If you have an extension of the ocean under the ice shelf because the ice sheet is getting thinner, uh, you will have uh, an extension of the surface that melts a lot and this will create positive feedback. All these feedbacks are very important 
and they can really change the, the simulations that we are doing. If you don't have these couple models, you will never be able to represent these interactions. Um, what these models show is that if you have a strong and sustained changes in the winds, uh, this will trigger a warming of the ocean and the ocean warming will trigger an ice sheet mass loss. If we were able to revert the atmospheric change, the changes in the winds, then in, in, most, con in most circumstances, the ocean would go back to the present day temperatures. But in some places, the ice sheet will never go back to the present day position. It will keep retreating and keep thinning and keep re contributing to sea level rise. And this means that a tipping point has been crossed and that the marine ice sheet instability where the uh, contribution to sea level rise increases whatever we do uh, to the climate system. So one key question we've been trying to ask is, given that parts of West Antarctica are already undergoing large changes, has this marine ice sheet instability process already begun? And so to try and answer this, we ran some um, ice sheet model experiments. Um, and actually, one of the results of that is that maybe we haven't crossed a tipping point in Antarctica just yet. And to some extent, that's good news. But what about in the future? So a second piece of work that we did found that even with no further warming in the future, we could enter phases of irreversible um, self-sustained retreat, and that would mean much more mass loss uh, from parts of West Antarctica. So it's important to bear in mind that this process would take a very long time um, to happen. But what's worrying is that we might be in what's called an overshoot or a borrowed time state already, whereby if we don't do anything in the future, we could see large changes or parts of West Antarctica could be destined to collapse. And this is a really important message for the importance of reducing uh, further climate warming. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, global sea levels could rise by about one metre by the end of this century. Climate change forces us to prepare for even greater challenges in the future. Large international projects like our EU project TIPAX play a vital role in collaboratively solving these climate challenges. In the recent years we've made many discoveries about Antarctica and its surrounding ocean. Yet we still don't know what will happen in specific regions, both on the very short timescales and on the longer timescales. To effectively prepare ourselves for sea level rise, we basically need two things. We need longer uh, observational records that can provide us with early warnings. And we also need uh, advanced earth system models where we don't only look at the ocean and at the ice processes, but we include all the processes of the Earth's climate, like for example also sea ice and atmospheric processes. Fortunately, even though our TIPAX project comes to our, an end, our scientists, we, we stay committed and uh, focused on trying to solve the sea level rise questions.